is to understand the relationship between quantity or volume of activity and cost. A typical approach to this problem is to identify fixed and variable costs over a range of activity. We start by describing the cost estimation problem. Then we look at approximation methods, such as the high-low method, linear regression, and finally, we take a look at an application to operating costs. I want to start the section on estimating costs with a small mathematical digression, and that is I want to convince you that an income statement is what mathematicians sometimes call a linear transformation, or what we more commonly think of as a line. So let's begin with a pretty simple example. Here we have a company that sells widgets, what else? And in 2012, it sold 200 widgets for $25 each. The widgets have a variable cost of $15 per unit, and the company incurs $750 in annual fixed costs. Now, we could show an income statement in several different representations. We could do it the way we normally would format an income statement. We could do it algebraically, as we did in cost, volume, profit analysis. Or we could just fill in the numbers. Each of these representations are equivalent. But what we want to emphasize in this case is really the one in the middle, the algebra, because that's the one that shows us how we can do a transformation from quantities to, in this case, profits. So let's draw the picture of that transformation. So if we draw the picture where we have quantities on one axis and profits on the other axis, then the line or the graph represents the linear transformation from quantities to profits. So if we start with a quantity of 200, we end up with a profit of 1250. If we started with a quantity of 100, once again, we would reflect that off the line and see a profit of $250. The line then represents the linear transformation of quantities into profits. And in this example, that transformation would take the form of profit is equal to $10 times quantity minus $750. If this looks familiar, it should, because essentially it's a cost volume profit graph. Now in this screencast, we're really concerned more with estimating cost curves, and we're gonna start with the total cost curve. Now total cost equals fixed cost plus variable cost, or we can represent that more algebraically as seen in the, in the box. The problem is that we often want to end up with a total cost curve or an estimation of a total cost curve, but we start with some actual data. The data box shows several months worth of data for which we have quantities, outputs, and the total costs that have been incurred. But what we don't know is how much of the total costs are fixed costs and what the variable costs per unit are. One way to start would be to draw a graph and the pluses represent the data points where I have just plotted the output and the cost. The red line is an eyeball linear approximation of the total cost curve. But we could use other methods. For example, if we wanted to draw the high-low curve, we would just connect the high quantity point and the low quantity point, draw a straight line, and that would be the high-low method. Now, of course, 
Once we draw the line, doesn't mean we know what the fixed cost and the variable cost are. What we want to figure out is how to go from the points, i.e. the data, to an estimate of the fixed cost and the variable cost per unit. We will start with a review of the high-low approximation method for determining the equation of a line. Initially, we have a data point, and we'll call this data point the high point. We'll add a second point, and we'll call this data point the low point. Then we'll draw a line connecting the two points. Each point satisfies the relationship defined by the line for some value of k and b. The question is, can we determine the values of k and b? To make this easier to follow, let's suppose the high point has the value 200 and 1400, meaning the x value is 200 and the y value is 1400. x low equals 100, y low equals 900. The line we're interested in will have an intercept equal to k, and the slope of the line will be equal to b. Now to estimate the parameters of the line, we use the fact that both points satisfy the same equation, y equals k plus b times x for some values of k and b. This means, of course, that we can write the equation substituting in the values y high and x high and y low and x low. And we can do this for the numerical values as well. Of course, the interesting question is, can we solve for k and b? We have two equations and two unknowns, so it should be possible to solve this system of equations. Let's subtract the low from the high, and we do this by subtracting y high minus y low. Do the same thing for the numerical versions. We can simplify the results and end up with y high minus y low is equal to b times x high minus x low. The numerical version simplifies quite a bit more. And finally, we get the equation that tells us how to determine the value of b. Now I've put a prime next to it to indicate that we have a concrete value now. And if we look at the numerical version, we see that b is equal to 5. Once we have the value of b, we can substitute into the cost equations to get the value of k. And it doesn't matter whether we use the high equation or the low equation. Either would work. Let's use the high equation. So this says that 1400 minus 5 times 200 is equal to k, or k is equal to 400. We have formulas for determining the value of b and k given any two points on a plane. Now, importantly, we started all this in order to estimate a cost curve. So let's take what we've learned and apply that to the estimate of cost curve. Total cost is equal to fixed cost plus variable cost times the number of units. And the interpretation is that y is equal to total cost. k, the intercept, is the estimate of fixed cost. b, the slope, is the estimate of variable cost per unit and x is the number of units. What remains then is for us to apply this to actual data, and we'll do that in the next screencast.